This video is going to be our first step into the world of multiple linear regression. And I think the example of unique intercepts, which is kind of my own terminology here, is going to be the easiest of our first steps. So we're going to start exploring this uh, kind of very general model that goes by the name multiple linear regression. And this very general model is really the backbone of, I, I might just say, statistics. Uh, what we're going to start doing with multiple linear regression is figuring out how to incorporate almost any number of explanatory variables to explain one numerical response variable. This is specifically for the case of one numerical response variable. Multiple is describing the possibly many explanatory variables you have in a, ver in a model. If we used the word multivariate instead, that would explain possibly many numerical response variables, but that's going to be outside the scope of certainly this video. So here, multiple will describe uh, multiple explanatory variables. Uh, like I said already, unique intercepts, uh, that's my phrase, is possibly the easiest example of one categorical and one numerical explanatory variable to predict one numerical response variable. We're going to start with a picture to motivate the idea, and then we will um, finish up this video with an example in R. So let's start with a base picture where we have some x-axis numerical explanatory variable and some y-axis numerical response variable. Now what we're going to start doing here is imagining we have not only a cloud of points for which we want to draw some sort of uh, line through the data, but we're going to imagine we actually have another group, like another level of a categorical variable for which we would ask for a separate line. So there'd be one line for this group and another line for this group. Oops, let me try again so I can better make my point. That looks better. And what we're going to be exploring here is the fact that this difference is going to be constant anywhere along the x-axis. That is, we're going to have two lines that are parallel where this difference for any value on the x-axis, the difference between the black and the red lines is constant. We're going to get a model that sets up one slope but separate intercepts. Okay, so the way we'd write this out is we are trying to predict the numerical response variable y, so we'll call that y hat, is equal to, and then we'll have some sort of offset, uh, some sort of intercept. We always call that beta naught. And then we have plus, and then this difference is going to be represented as beta 1, beta 1 times, and then we have some sort of level of a categorical explanatory variable. So let's say um, the black line represents group A and the red line represents group B, then what we're going to get is an indicator variable for B. That is, if we're trying to make predictions for observations from level B, the indicator variable B will turn on. It'll be 1. You'll get 1 times beta 1 plus beta naught, and you'll be making predictions relative to the red line. But since the red and the black lines have the same slope, we will have a second uh, beta 2 coefficient in here, and that's multiplied by the numerical explanatory variable x. So as you can see, we now have one model predicting whatever the numerical response variable is, where we've incorporated the numerical explanatory variable x alongside its slope, and we've incorporated levels 
of the categorical explanatory variable, whatever its name is, with this offset term represented by the indicator variable b. Now notice this one model will allow us to make predictions for either groups a or b. What you've got to recognize is that level a is hidden in the intercept term beta naught. So think of it like this. If you're trying to make a prediction for observations from level A, the indicator variable B will be zero since you're not trying to make predictions for observations from level B. You're trying to make predictions for observations from level A. In this case, B will be zero. Zero times beta one is zero. And you'll be left with a unique line beta naught plus beta two times x. And in fact, if you're trying to make a, okay, so let's do this. We can even write this down. If you're making predictions for level A, the line looks like this. And if you're making predictions for level B, the line would look like this, where I've now recognized that the indicator variable for level B turns into one, 1 times beta 1 is just beta 1. I will group beta 1 and beta naught together to give me a unique intercept. And then we will have plus beta 2 times x. And there we have it. One linear model that incorporates two lines. That is one line for each level of some categorical explanatory variable. If we jump into an R session here, where I've got all of the code typed out to load our favorite libraries, I'm going to use the Finches dataset, which you can find up on my GitHub repository named Data, where my username is my last name. And then we can start out with the plot where we're imagining that there is well, we're going to start by imagining that there's a line going through these observations. But what I'm going to really ask you to do is imagine that now we're going to have multiple lines, one line for each island. And at this point, we're only going to specify unique intercepts, and we're going to force the slopes to all be the same. So we're going to get lines for each island where the slope is the same, and the slope is relative to the numerical explanatory variable middle toe length, and we're going to try to predict the numerical response variable beak width. So let's just dive into storing a variable named fit int for like it is a fitted model with unique intercepts. We're going to continue to use the function ln, which stands for linear model. We're going to try to predict beak width by, and here's where we can lay out that we're going to use the categorical explanatory variable island and the numerical explanatory variable uh, middle toe length. And this will, these variables come from a data set named df. So that's not so bad for R to go and do fairly quickly. And if we ask for the coefficients from this model, you can see we get an intercept, and that's for Floriana. There are intercept offsets for each of the next two islands, and then there is one slope across the only numerical explanatory variable in this model. So at this point, we're really going to have to start remembering which types of variables, here I've highlighted the categorical, the levels of a categorical variable, and here I've highlighted the numerical explanatory variable, we're going to have to start remembering the statistical types of the explanatory variables in our model, because that will dictate how we interpret these coefficients. So let's just go ahead and store this. So we can look at the model matrix of our fitted model. And I think it'll be sufficient for us to just look at the first six rows of the model matrix. So the way we're to think about this is here's the intercept, always one, because it's always included in our model. 
the first observation in our data set happens to be a finch, not from the island San Cristobal, but a finch from the island Santa Cruz, and that particular finch has its own middle toe length. Using this row of the model matrix, we could then make a prediction for a finch from the island Santa Cruz that has a middle toe length of 18.5. So we could do something like beta ints times, now let's just be fancy and we'll just extract the first row from the model matrix and then sum it up. And we can see that we would predict a beak width of 9.4 for a finch from the island Santa Cruz that has a middle toe length of 18.5. And in fact, you can put whatever you want over here. Even if you don't see, obviously, but there is one, a finch from the island Floriana, you could make up your own vector. One for the intercept for Floriana, zero for San Cristobal, zero for Santa Cruz, right there. Those three integers indicate that we are going to make a prediction for a finch from the island Floriana, and we could just say middle toe length of 20. And indeed, if we had a middle toe length of 20, we would predict the beak width to be 10.6. Now, this then allows us to do all sorts of things like we've done before, where we could predict for all the finches in our data set what values of beak width they'd have. And since they're predictions, we'll call them y hat. We could apply across the rows of the model matrix the function that takes a row and adds together beta ints times that row. And indeed, y hat would be a vector of all of our predictions. What's really nice about this is if you store those predictions back in your original data set, you should be able to make the plot that we drew earlier relative to this model. So let's see, on the middle toe length is on the x-axis. We have beak width on the y-axis. We can color the point by island. That's kind of new to us, but I think you'll enjoy the outcome. We want to see all the points on the plot, and we want to draw lines. Where on the y-axis, we put our predictions newly incorporated into our model, into our data frame. And what we get out is unique lines for finches from each island where by, def by choice we have only put in one numerical explanatory variable such that all of those lines have the same slope. By force, by our choice really, this is a linear model that gives unique intercepts if the green and the blue lines were to extend down to the y-intercept, the green, blue, and red lines would all have the same y-intercept. This is the picture to go along with the uh, model, multiple linear regression, unique intercepts, because each of those lines has a different intercept, but they all have the same slope. So we could, of course, bootstrap this model to understand our uncertainty in the differences between the lines or the slope itself. So we will write a function boot ints that takes a data set and a vector of indices. And all we're really going to do is copy and paste all of this in here, where we remember to index the data set by that vector of indices. We've already loaded the library boot, so we can go ahead and write boot, which takes our original data set, which, and then as a second argument, our function to calculate the coefficients of interest. 
then we'll repeat these calculations a thousand and one times. And from this, we're going to call boot.ci on the object B. We'll start with index one and uh, type of confidence intervals of purse for percentage. And in fact, here is a great example of an intercept that does not make sense in context. Notice here on the x-axis, although we only have data down to, I don't know, 15 here, intercepts are technically defined when middle toe length is way over here equal to zero. And in fact, if you continued that red line down all the way to where my cursor is, somewhere where middle toe length is zero over here, you can imagine that it crosses the y-axis at a negative number. This is an example of the intercept not making sense. Not only does it not make sense to have a middle toe length of zero, it also doesn't make sense to have a beak width of negative numbers. So we'll just go ahead and skip that. What does make sense is asking, what about the offset relative to Finches from the island Floriana to, from the island Floriana to the, let's see, index two is going to be for San Cristobal. And in fact, if you go from this bottom line to this top line, that difference right there is represented in this confidence interval. So we might say something like we are 95% confident that for any middle toe length, um, an expected finch's beak width is 0 0.31 is between 0 0.31 and 1.43 oops, centimeters larger than the beak width of finches from the island Floriana. Let me see if I did that right. We are 95% confident that for any middle toe length, a finch's beak width a finch, let's see, we would say a San Cristobal finch's beak width is between 0 0.31 and 1.43 centimeters larger than the beak width of finches from the island Floriana. That wasn't my best first go of it, but we got it right in the end. What we are trying to do is capture our uncertainty in the difference between the beak width for finches from the island San Cristobal relative to the island Floriana. And we say this is true for um, any middle toe length because this difference between these two lines here is constant all the way across, hence these lines are parallel. From this model, we could also get out confidence intervals for the slope. Now this is one slope for all of these finches. So you would interpret this as the standard interpretation for a slope, which I will leave to you all. This video was our first step into multiple linear regression, where in this particular case, we focused on a model that gives us unique intercepts for birds from each level of the categorical explanatory variable, in this case, island, but maintained one shared slope across all those levels. Now, if you would like a challenge or some practice in making predictions, here, let's see, I'll put the challenge up here next to the code that will help you out to address the challenge. 
I encourage you to try to find the difference in predictions for finches from the island Floriana and Santa Cruz, whose middle toe length is 18. So that's like, go here to 18, make predictions relative to two of these lines, and find the difference. Then compare that to the difference in predictions between the same two islands who, when the finch's middle toe length is equal to 22, so something up here. Go up to the line and find the difference between these two predictions. And then ask yourself, why are the difference in the predictions the same? And I think if you can both make those predictions and understand why the difference in those predictions is as it is, you will have an excellent understanding of how this model is working for us.